the country's best food. From New York to L.A. It's fun for the kids, it's fun for adults. Stretchy. It's definitely heavenly. It's just amazing. Slathered in chocolate and covered in gold. Gorgeous. We're ditching the savory and going all in on sweets. Can I please have a unicorn milkshake? This is Bite Size Coast to Coast. Very exciting. First stop, Houston. All right, we're ready to go. It's stretchy beyond belief. <laughs> it's super creamy, super stretchy. So yeah, I really love it. I love this ice cream because it's so flavorful. It's always been a family-run business. I saw my grandfather in it. I saw my dad, my uncle, everybody, the whole family was in it. It is not your typical ice cream. I don't know how to describe it. It's definitely heavenly. Hi, my name is Fadi Rukab. I'm the owner of Booza at 5922 Richmond Avenue in Houston, Texas. My name is Ricky Rukab, and I am the father of the owner of Booza, Houston, Texas. Booza is a stretchy style ice cream my great-grandmother invented in the early 1930s, and we've been making it ever since. She used to make small batches of ice cream, and in the 1941, they opened their first location in Ramallah, Palestine, and it is still the same location with the most famous ice cream in the Middle East. In 1998, we came to the United States, and my son wanted to do ice cream since day one. I've been trying to get my dad to open this location for about 20 years, so behind his back, I went and bought these two machines, and he saw them, and he realized that he needed to start teaching me the recipe. We did locate most of the ingredients, and I think it was very easy for him to pick up how to make it and how to make it better. I come here as often as I can. It's just amazing. Our ice cream is based from whole milk, sugar. The stretchiness of the ice cream comes from the guar gum, dextrose, arabic gum. We make everything in-house. Our ice cream has creamier, has higher resistance to melting. People are intrigued about this stretchy style ice cream, seeing their faces on it when it stretches and stuff. It's exciting. I really like the texture and the elasticity of it. It's really, really good. It's really flavorful as well. It's not very artificial flavored. It feels real, you know? Since we opened, a lot of people come and when they take the first bite of ice cream, I don't want to exaggerate, they start crying and they remember that ice cream which they had 30 or 40 years ago and they never had a chance to go back home to try it. I love the stretchiness of it. I love the texture of it. But most of all, it brings back the memories. They make it the same way like in the Middle East. I've been trying to get into this business and I'll, to be honest with you, at one point I didn't think I would be into this business because I was getting too old and I didn't think my dad would ever teach me the recipe, so it means a great deal. It's a really dream come true to do this. From Houston to Chicago and bubble waffles topped with ice cream. They're crispy, they're light, a little bit chewy. You add ice cream in there, it becomes a decadent experience. Joey Noodles is a Pan-Asian cuisine place. We've been around for about 20 plus years. We're famous for bringing bubble tea to Chicago. Today we're here at Joey Plus, which is our Shabu Shabu restaurant, which is like a Chinese style hot pot. Most of the year, Shabu Shabu hot pot is our business. For a few months out of the year, when it gets really warm outside, bubble waffles are what people come here for. Bubble waffles are from Hong Kong. They've been around since the 50s. They're the number one street food. It's not that far off from American desserts. You have the waffles, which are egg-shaped, and the toppings are a wide range of things. It's fun for the kids, it's fun for adults. People get everything on their bubble waffle. We have very exotic ice creams. We have mango, we have taro, we have chai ice cream. It's an Asian experience. We also have the mainstream items that a lot of people are used to, it's like chocolate. We have fruit toppings, chocolate syrup, different types of candies, macaroons. For most people, Chinatown's kind of a strange experience for them because they don't think that they can relate to the food. The nice thing about bubble waffles, it keeps people cool. They're very pretty, there's so much color to them. They look amazing to eat. It's a lot of different flavors. All of our customers love bubble waffles. From waffles to churros, we're headed to the Big Apple for some more. This is amazing, I'm gonna repeat it again. <laughs> this is amazing, oh my God. We 
wanted to do something different. The first thing that came into my mind is um, when I was younger, I used to go camping with my friends. We had the s'mores and the graham crackers, and I just remember how warming it is to have that with friends. I just thought that, okay, why not turn that into a flavor? Why not have that type of feeling every day? Basically, it's a hot ice cream with a mixture of three things. Fudge, graham, and vanilla ice cream with toasted marshmallow on top with a graham cracker on the side. You're tasting the saltiness, the sweetness, the melted marshmallow. You're tasting it all. And there's a graham cracker that I had to pull to the side to eat later. And whenever they order one, they never quite know what to expect. Mind-bending. <laughs> it's like you actually went to a bakery and you had a tutor and somebody just put drops of ice cream inside of it. You should come and try it. Like today. I mean today. Up next, a decadent dessert drink in New York. That was completely over the top, in a good way. And later, would you pay 500 bucks for a brownie? Delicious, moist, decadent. It's Bite Size Coast to Coast. Give me another piece of that. It's Bite Size Coast to Coast. Let's grab a drink in NYC. The Hickory S'mores Latte is the glamping trip that New Yorkers didn't get to take this summer. We're at Felix Roasting Company. It's an amazing new cafe that's just opened in Midtown Manhattan. We wanted to really immerse the customer in an experience, not just serve them a drink and let it go from there. So we actually prepare the Hickory S'mores Latte right in front of the guests. So we have a hickory infused salted caramel marshmallow to make in house, and 70% dark chocolate and a shot of espresso, and a graham cracker steeped milk. And we actually smoke the entire thing under a bell jar. So you get the campfire, you get the graham cracker, you get the marshmallow, and you get the chocolate. So it's the full s'mores experience. I think more so than any other city, New Yorkers really appreciate this and they instantly just get pulled away from where they're at and into like their childhood or a trip they've been on. It's totally like nostalgic for almost everyone we've served it to. That was completely over the top. Yes. In a good way. I love the way that the layering of the different flavors. It's, you had s'mores deconstructed with the marshmallow, the chocolate, the smoke. It was a great overall experience. We're aiming to be so much more than just a coffee shop. We're a sanctuary, a hideaway for the people of Midtown Manhattan who are looking for somewhere to hide, to duck in, have a break, and just take a moment for themselves. A lot of people are coming for the s'mores latte, but we also have a few other very thoughtful, really well executed drinks that we hope people check out. The deconstructed espresso tonic is our spin on what is now kind of a classic coffee drink, the espresso tonic. We have a whole selection of garnishes, including two different types of basil, mints, lemon. We make our own tonic water. We created this kind of Campari syrup, so it's very dry and bitter, and a rose water mist. And so the idea is it's an aromatic experience, it's a flavor experience, and it involves the guests, because they actually get to mix the coffee with the drink. I think with anything that's like generating buzz on the internet or on Instagram, there's often an expectation that it's not actually going to be that tasty, but these are actually delicious drinks that we work very hard for. And we get groups of people coming in for it, people are driving like hours. We've been having a hard time making enough drinks just to get them out the door. We're leaving the bar and headed to a different kind of bar in Houston. These days, unicorns are very popular, so every birthday we take our daughter to, it was unicorn theme birthday party. So we decided to do a unicorn theme store. We opened our first store in Dallas in December, and we saw a lot of people coming in, driving in from Houston, so that's why Houston was obviously our second choice. Can I please have a unicorn milkshake? My wife, she's a pastry chef. Our background itself is dessert and ice creams and all that. I ordered the unicorn cotton candy. The lemonade is the lavender, and there is a bunch of cotton candy around it. I got the unicorn milkshake. Like, the milkshake's actually vanilla, but it has like a strawberry tint to it. Mm. And then there's frosting on the side, and then cake on top of it. Uh, you've eaten cotton candy, you've had lemonade, 
You're eating a cake pop, you're eating a cookie. You have had a milkshake with not only a piece of cake inside, but an ice cream cone on top of that. So how do you feel about all this food, Harlow? I love these desserts. So one of the parts of the Magical Dessert Bar experience is making sure everything around here is Instagrammable. Well, there are a lot of details in this store. It took a lot of effort and time. People come in and they, uh, we want them to feel wow factor. They need to come in and, and feel magical in here. They take pictures everywhere. We have different unicorns on different walls and we have the alley that's all light up like a unicorn colors and whatnot. So that's why a lot of people come in and, and they're not just coming in for desserts, they're coming in for an experience. I like unicorns because when I was eight I had a unicorn themed birthday party. This feels like a birthday party. Well, I like that they make kids really hyper. From a unicorn bar to a unicorn you can eat. I saw it all over Instagram and I was like, I have to get it. That's next. And later, a $500 brownie. When you bite into this thing, you're going to feel like you went to heaven. Plus, a monstrous, delicious fruit treat. Swamp bucket! Stuffed with candy, of course. There's nothing that's not good. You're watching Bite Size Coast to Coast. Next stop, Chicago, where the customers flock two by two to this spot. I saw it all over Instagram and I was like, I have to get it. <laughs> I would definitely say this is the cutest place for gelato in Chicago. What kind did you get? A monkey. I came up with the concept of animal cones because I thought that it would bring kids in and make them happy. That's so cute. Hi, my name is Elisa Wynn. I am the owner of Eli's Art in Wicker Park in the west side of Chicago. Eli's Art all came about after having my first child. I came up with the concept of animal cones because I thought that it would bring kids in and make them happy. The design of the cones are very entertaining and very kid-centric and it's very fun for the kids and the kids love it. Hello everybody. <laughs> We do have our staple animals here. Our most popular is our unicorn. We have a monkey, we have a pig, we also have a koala, a panda. We are recently working on a summer safari series which we will introduce three new animals. Thanksgiving we have turkey. In the winter season we have like winter animals like polar bear, we have Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, we even have a snowman. It has to be chocolate, you wanna try it? Our flavors are rotating so that way when you come in you always have a new experience because you have to choose a flavor and an animal, so it's kind of like, oh, a lot of choices. Piggybacking is one of our options here that we have. Imagine a five scoop cone that with different animals stacked on top of each other. Whoa. I got a unicorn and a koala, and they're so cute. I love like this little face and everything. As a hobby growing up, I was a baker, so I love to bake. When I put the idea together, the gelato with the animals, I baked different cookies, and then I tried to see which ones would work with our animals. Oh my God, that's so cute. The nicest part about it is to see people come in and bringing smiles to people's faces. To see the kids come in and they're so super excited to get their animal. It lights up their day, you know, it's just very exciting. <laughs> Ellie's Art is a perfect summertime sweet treat. Our motto is, life is sweet. I would definitely say this is the cutest place for gelato in Chicago. And if you are having a rough day or you're out celebrating or just rewarding yourself for any reason, come in and I guarantee you will bring a smile to your face once you get a one of our animal scoops. Chicago to Houston and a monstrous dessert. Yeah, we're trying to mix fruits, candies, drinks for a full mouth experience. Ta da! <laughs> They're like no other. Like, once they see their menu, people drive. I came from Alabama, it's the first stop I made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It must be good to sit here and sweat because I don't sit nowhere and sweat. <laughs> 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 We're a big horror family. I collect horror memorabilia, so my wife's like, hey, you know Rospa stands for snow cone in Spanish, and I was like, Rospa monster. <laughs> we started Rospa Monsters nine years ago. Uh, we've, you know, slowly built up. We wrapped the trailer, we bought signs over time. We developed it. We're not seasonal. 
So to keep income coming in and to keep us out there in people's faces, we started adding the fruits. Oh, the fruit bowls, they are amazing. It's everything wrapped up in one and it is amazing. Our swamp bucket is really popular. So we take a watermelon, we half it, we core it out, and then we chop up watermelon, pineapple, uh, strawberries with gummy bears, so skeddies, chamoy, lucas. We put decoration candies all over it. That's a lot of stuff in there. It's really good. So a pineapple prep outlet, we fill it with pineapples, apples, strawberries, chamoy, lucas, candies. We decorate the top, sprinkle uh, lucas all over it. With all kinds of different flavors. They love them. Ta-da! <laughs> If you're not into all the fruit stuff, you can come and get a snow cone, shaved ice. Today we ordered a medium strawberry with a flat top with extra cream and gummy bears. It is my favorite and it is Jackson's favorite. So we have over 100 flavors, uh, way over 100 different flavors to choose from in snow cones. And we make our own ice. Our version is shaved ice. We like it really fine and fluffy. The ice is good. I don't know how they make it, but you know, they chop it up or whatever. We make our own flavors. We make our own syrup. Today I ordered a concoction. It's a snow cone. It's ice, pickle juice, pickles, chamoy, and tajine. Amazing. Owning Raspa Monsters has been a privilege, really, to serve the local people. Um, to serve people from real far away. They come all the way from Katy, Beaumont, all, I mean, from everywhere. Everything's amazing. There's nothing that's not good. I think I've tried over 80% of the menu and never been disappointed. And trust me, you will be back. From monsters to dragons and an ancient candy in San Fran. Hi, my name is Derek and welcome to Dragon Papa Dessert. I'm going to show you an authentic Chinese pastry which was only served to the Chinese emperor in the past. It's called a Dragon Beard Candy. So I'm going to show you how to do the process. The Dragon Beard Candy actually is made by the raw molasses. When we heat it up, this molasses will soft a bit. Now I just keep stretching the molasses with the cornstarch make it more finer and finer until it totally changes like the silk. We need to make sure we don't push too hard, otherwise the strand will break. My great 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 grandfather, he used to make this candy in the Beijing Palace for the emperor. So that's how we learned the candy. And I'm the fifth generation who make this candy in my family. So after we stretching the molasses to the little white seal, we need to wrap the peanut, coconut, and sesame seeds inside. Make the candy more tasty and not so sweet. So the correct way to eat the dragon beer candy is not put the whole things in your mouth because this one is kind of chewy and it will stick in your mouth. Let's take a little bite like this. And definitely, you need to get some messy beer on your face after eat this candy, okay? Get out the checkbook for a dessert as decadent as it is expensive. The 24 karat gold brownie. We're digging in next. We're back on Bite Size. Let's head to LA. I had a customer ask me a couple weeks ago if I could make them a decadent dessert for one of their friends as a gift. So I came up with the 24 karat gold brownie for $500. All right, we're here at Baby J's. We're about to make the Johnny Walker Blue Label Chocolate Scotch Glaze for our $500 24 karat gold brownie. First, we're gonna put our chocolate in, melt that down. We're gonna heat up our cream. Beautiful in the piece de resistance. Thank you for our beautiful Johnny Walker Blue Label. Ooh, all of that. All right. Bring that to a boil real quick. 
It took us 12 times to get that glaze perfect. I wish you could smell this. We're going in for the pour. Ooh. All right, we're ready to go. This is a beautiful mirror glaze. We want to make sure all the sides, every edge is coated so the gold will stick perfectly. We want to make it thin too. So how do you get it thin? You got to tap it. I think we got it all. I think it's looking good. Get a beautiful glaze on that. Wow. And if you look, you see it's called the mirror glaze. You should see your smiling face in it. All right, that's it. Now we're gonna let that set for five minutes. I bring the gold in from Thailand. It is a 24 karat gold edible leaf and it literally is inert. You eat it, it goes through you, it doesn't do anything. Just came out of the fridge, the chocolate's all set right now. You can see that beautiful mirror finish. So see, you take it. Gorgeous. Nice. It's the most delicious, moist, and decadent brownie you could ever put your lips to. It's got a humidor box that it comes in to keep it fresh for two weeks. And it also has a $100 Monte Cristo cigar with a cutter and my personal business card in case you need to order more or want me to come by the house and do some cooking. Who buys these things? High-end clientele, celebrity, regular Joes. I had one guy, his son, saved up all his allowance to buy, to buy one. When you bite into this thing, you're gonna feel like you went to heaven. It don't get no better than this, guys. One of the Baby J customers. Pop it in there, whole bite. <laughs> Look, he's got gold on his lips. Look at that. Gold, gold, gold on his lips. Wow. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> Give me another piece of that. <laughs>